Welcome to Daz Geek. We're going to take a look at Zorin OS 17 Pro today. So we got the Pro Edition. Now you can always get the free edition of Zorin OS. So if finances are an issue right now, or you're not sure you want to pay, you can go get the free version. But they have the Pro version where they load with a bunch of applications we'll take a look at and a bunch of really cool themes. And the themes allow you, if you're a user coming from Windows, Mac OS, Chromebook, or you just prefer some of the layout of that, maybe you have all of those options and you prefer the way Chromebook looks or Mac looks or something else, you could set your themes so that they have very similar menus and interfacing, which is just some really cool things that they do to make that transition between the different systems easier and faster. And Zorin OS, boy, they know, they know how to make something beautiful. And I love that we have the option to actually pay for some of these additional add-ons. You could go add the software yourself. It's all free and open source. But I like being able to support a company that's out there in the open source world. So if you're capable of it, very cool. We can have another discussion, though, on whether $48 is a little bit steep there. You have other operating systems also based on Ubuntu, like Zorin OS, like Elementary, that also do some incredibly amazing, beautiful theming and things out there. So they have an option where you can kind of set what you want to pay for it. But how many people just set that to zero and download it anyways and that type of stuff? So, you know, it is a whole other discussion on itself. This is about Zorin OS 17 Pro. I'm coming from Blend OS, one of my favorite, if not the favorite distro of 2023. It's a hard competition to compete with Blend OS. But let's get into it. Let's check out what Zorin OS 17 Pro has in store for us. So the very first thing I want you to do is just to take it in. Look at how beautiful this desktop environment is. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is one of many different themes that we can choose from, but you've got all kinds of great options built in here. Number one, it shows me all of my applications that are running here. And this is based on GNOME. So that's pretty cool. I love that I actually can see the open applications and for those who don't know what I'm talking about in GNOME, they've recently added it so that I think if you go into the sub menu, you can start to see what applications are in the background. And that's been a big battle of mine with them for a long time. Zorin OS fixed it. That's all that matters. They fixed it. You can see all the applications running right here with app indicators. Love that they did that. Also in this menu, we have our new screenshot tool. So I can quickly click that, do a screenshot or screen recording. So it's very nice that they built that functionality right in there. So go to camera, screen, window, whatnot, and very easily take screenshots. I use that a lot in making content and videos. So I really appreciate that they have that in there. You can go into your advanced sound output. So you can change your sound settings right there from clicking that arrow. And I have it on dark mode auto, but we can choose it. So what this does is at night, it goes into dark mode during the day, it goes into more bright mode, but you can change that as you want. And they also have their version of KDE Connect with Zorn Connect. So you can connect this device uh, to your phone and be able to send images back and forth, files, uh, messages, those type of things. So very cool that they have that built in as well. Uh, everything here is customizable. They have so many cool things that they've done. You can see this is kind of your more traditional panel here and all of the applications that we have installed. Some of this I've installed myself, but you get a nice suite. And we'll go into that in a little more detail here in a second of applications right from the start with the pro version. If you don't get the pro version, you have to go install some of this yourself, but they're free and open source. So it's not that big of a deal. So I think the first thing we have to look at with Zorn, because to me, it's the biggest deal and they've done it so well, is the actual themes themselves. So let's take a look at these before I switch it where my ugly mug is in the right-hand corner and ruin the experience for you of the beauty of Zorn OS and kind of show you some of these options. So we've got this theme, which is kind of your more standard Windows look where you've got the menu, maybe Windows 10 over here on the left-hand side, you've got your search, you've got an all apps option as well, so you can see everything right there. And of course the menu is fully customizable as well, which I'll show you uh, when we're going through some of the applications. So very nice. Then we've got this, which is kind of the same thing, but you've got the expanded naming convention down there. We've got this option here, which is kind of a hybrid here. We've got the nice roll up universal search up here. We've got the GNOME kind of panel that pops up in our different workspaces and you know, it's uh, kind of a hybrid between 
GNOME, and I don't know what else. Maybe more Mac OS-ish there. We've got this option, which means if you really like that clean desktop and you only want to see your menu and you hit the super key, you can utilize that. You've got the option where it keeps the menu at the bottom, more Mac OS-like, I would say here. And we also, because I have a trackpad that I've put on my desktop just for you, wanted to show you the three finger up. You've got some ability, look at that, the 3D cubes and things to switch between workspaces. So you've also got your touch gestures and things built in, which they've done a fantastic job on. You've got this more Windows 11-y feel, I would say here with this particular theme. You've got your classic Ubuntu menu on the side. You've got your more, I don't know, I'd call this like XFCE looking menu, more narrow menu there as an option. Let's see what else we have here. And we've got this panel, kind of again, some hybridized option, your menu in the left and some of your shortcut icons in the middle there. Looks very nice and classy. And then we've got this option here, which I don't know what to call this. This may be some standard version of GNOME. Let me know in the comments below. I don't know. But let's go with, uh, I don't know, maybe we want to go a little Mac OS feel right here. Let's go with the Mac OS feel right now. And I want to show you some more stuff with the themes here as well. So if we open that back up, uh, we can change accent colors, background. So what you see right here is it's on a schedule to automatically switch from day and night, which is very cool that they have that option there. But if I want to switch it to daylight, for instance, I could just go here and have the nice, bright, beautiful screen there. And then if I want dark mode all the time, I could do that as well or set up on a schedule like I have. You've got some other stuff here where you can change some of your application, um, different themes, icon themes, your shell. You've got effects, which you can see I have the desktop cube in the spatial switcher. So if we alt tab, you can kind of see what that looks like. Pretty cool stuff there. And we have the interface, title bars on the left, left super key, advanced window tiling. So the window tiling by default works really well, just like it works really well in GNOME overall. In this particular, and, and this is something that is under their advanced settings, kind of considered experimental. So I'm going to give them a pass on this, but this would fall under one of the quirks that I've found is that um, I love that we have all these options for tiling. Tiling is so advantageous when you're working on coding and multiple projects at the same time, being able to manage all of your screens or doing a podcast for that matter, video podcasts like us, where I've got video, I've got patrons over here, I've got show notes, I've got all this stuff. I want to tile it nicely onto the screen. Uh, so I love that they have these options, but I cannot figure out how to set a key. So when I do this, it says press a shortcut. Let's say I want it to be shift super eight. Uh, you can see it just opens my file manager because I think what it's doing is it's defaulting to the GNOME settings key bindings and instead of actually setting a shortcut here. So it's still experimental. They need to do some work on that, but I'm very excited for when it does work, what that will be able to accomplish and do. I think it's very cool to have um, some advanced settings there. And then you've got some dash... Um, settings as well. So you can tell it to position on the bottom, left, top, right, just lots of great customization built in. Uh, you could take all the desktop icons off if you want, and or you can keep them on like I have, and you can change some of your font sizes and other things. They also have fractional scaling. I'm using this on two 4K BenQ monitors. So fractional scaling, uh, for those that don't know, allow me to kind of change um, the scale of the fonts and the icons and things, because when you have a 4K monitor, operating system tends to shrink that down because of the high resolution to super small icons. And the scaling, like right here, is at 150%, and I could change that in increments, like 125 and things. Uh, so fractional scaling is there and available, which I absolutely love and appreciate that they've done. Okay, so now let's take a look at the software store here. I think they did an amazing job with the software store, curating lots of great software. Of course, with the pro version, again, you get a lot of software pre-installed, but they have a lot of flat packs in here. So they're not just sticking to the snaps, even though they're based on Ubuntu, which I appreciate a lot because I love flat packs. Snaps are fine too, but just happen to prefer flat packs uh, in most cases. And you've just got a very well curated things like DeBeaver, PyCharm, Spotify, stuff that people coming from other operating systems are going to look for. And again, Zorin OS, professional environment, you're paying, you know, if you're a business, $48 per license per seat, 
and you've got a lot of software at their fingertips right here. Really beautiful, curated, gorgeous themes uh, that you get out of the box for that 48 bucks. And so you've got a lot of software here also to have your developers, uh, audio people, video editors and things to just get started right away with, which I really appreciate. Now, if you pay the $48 for the personal license, you can install as many of your personal machines as you want. If you're a business though, you gotta pay per license seat. So keep in mind when you pay the $48, you get a download link. You can use that personally on as many machines as you have in your home, which I like. Uh, one of the downsides is they don't have an ARM version yet, which was frustrating because you know Ubuntu does, and I would love to see Zorn on a Raspberry Pi 5. I mean, come on, guys. That would be so freaking beautiful. Kit, I hear they're working on it. Can we speed that up a little bit, Zorn? Because this on a Raspberry Pi with all the theming already done and everything, I mean, nah, it would be freaking beautiful. All right, let's look at some of the applications they have pre-installed. So you got your weather, contacts, or door clocks, Audacity, photos, videos, uh, player there. Bitwarden, I think I added. Text to editor, blanket. This is kind of a cool application. Come on, show you blanket. Let me show you blanket just real quick. So this is one where you can kind of set a different sound effect. Anybody else loves songs? I've loved them since I was a kid. I'm scared of slowing down. This is a nice ambiance creating, whether you're coding, wanting to fall asleep, those type of things in there. System monitor, blender, terminal, bunch of utilities here. Let's take a look at some of this, you know, network configurations. They've got backup software built in, uh, CD burning software, cheese for your webcam, wine configurations, dark table in there. Uh, I think I added Discord. Evolution is their default mail app. Firefox is their default uh, browser in there. Fragments, Foliate, a lot of software. I don't even know what it is and haven't played with it. So this is really cool because I can use it on Destination Linux podcast for software spotlights. I can find some new stuff here that they've added. Uh, LibraCAD, again, I mentioned about the menu editing. You can go in here and, med and edit the menu all you want. And if you make a mistake, you can restore system configuration right back to normal. If you want to create new menus, new items within here and do all that customization, it's there, which I love. I have the option but it's not complicated. It's not forcing me to try to set that stuff up just to have a standard operating system. This thing gets out of your way. It's one of the things I really appreciate about Zorn is the simplicity. Uh, Minder Mix. Okay, this is where we're gonna get, this is where Zorn and I are gonna get a little bit um, into a battle here because they're providing some professional audio software like Mix but they're still on Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio is being replaced by Pipewire. It's really been replaced by Pipewire, in my opinion. Now, for your standard audio user, for people who are just watching YouTube videos, plugging in their headphones, some speakers, whatever, Pulse Audio is fine. It's done its job for many years. But because they included Mix in here, you're not going to have anybody doing professional audio mixing and creation with Pulse Audio. Before Pipewire came, it would have been Jack, and now we have Pipewire. And Pipewire allows us to do some incredible things. This takes me into QPW Graph, which is software. I installed Pipewire in this and replaced their Pulse Audio. By the way, that's why I have, you see all these options. Because if you installed QPW Graph and it was still on Pulse Audio, none of this would show connections or anything. But if I open a YouTube video or anything else, it'll actually show a connection here. You can see these connections. Anything that grabs an audio channel will show up here and I can actually mix things in. This allows me to do actual professional audio work for the podcast and things, piping in our patrons so they can hear the audio while we're doing the show and all of this stuff um, and music equipment, instruments, all of that you could pipe in right through here just by input to output, output to input, those type of things are setting up monitors. If you're going to talk about professional audio production, Zorin, you gotta be on Pipewire. You're on Wayland already, give you props for that, but you gotta be on Pipewire. This should have Pipewire in it. So uh, one of my Quark's disappointments is them not being on Pipewire. Hopefully they see this video and fix it really fast and uh, I'd be very appreciative, or hopefully at very least in the next version, they update that. Uh, you've got Secrets, uh, NordVPN I added in, OBS Studio I believe I added in as well, and some other things. Uh, Zorn Connect we talked about, and they got a nice tour. Um, we've, we've gone through the appearance and stuff there, and 
Let's take a look at the tour here. What do they have to say about Zora? excited to start the tour here. So you got your menu they're going to talk about to launch your applications, choose your desktop look with Zorin Appearance, which we've went through, connect your online accounts, of course. So if you've got Google accounts and other things, Google Drive, NextCloud Drive, any of that stuff, you can connect it so you can access it right from your file management. Uh, we talked about Zorin Connect software store I thought was really well done. And so that's their nice little tour that they give you right there at the beginning. So pretty dope. Let's look at some of the options for backgrounds too. So look at these absolutely gorgeous background options. That's the one I was using before I started making this video and then I switched it. I don't know why. Sometimes I do weird things. All right, so you can see all of these gorgeous options. I liked it because it said Zorn in this one, you know, but really beautiful desktop options for you available to check out. All right, so that's my quick tour of Zorn OS. Ultimately, Am I satisfied with the $48? I feel like $48 is a little steep, but again, I'm very happy to support an open source project like this. They do some amazing work with the theming and things, and you all know I don't theme well, so having somebody else that's professional do it for me, well, that's pretty awesome. So I don't have any issue with that. I do wish that Zorn would make it clear whether they take that $48 and maybe give some of those funds to some of the projects they're using to build this, like Gnome, for instance, and some of the open source software that they're packaging with the pro version, um, and maybe taking a little piece of that money and also giving it back to all of the projects like Ubuntu and things that without uh, Zorn OS wouldn't exist. So I think that would be pretty cool to see uh, as an option. Uh, also, when you're upgrading to a newer version, one of the quirks that uh, a lot of people are talking about is, let's say last month you bought Zorn OS 16, you paid the 48 bucks, and now Zorn OS 17 drops, well, you'd have to pay the $48 again. There's no like upgrade program in things, which I think would be a really cool option to keep people loyal and also continuing to upgrade to the latest versions in there. Maybe give them like, you know, an $8 discount or something like that. Or give them an option for the $48, but I could take eight of that dollars and split it on some of the foundations that again, help make this project exist. But Zorn OS overall, Fantastic job. I could see this taking a lot of people from Mac, Windows, and other things and bringing them into the Linux ecosystem very eagerly because of how beautiful and simple it is to set up. It didn't, when during the install, super easy like your typical Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the best installer out there, period. Fight me in the comments if you disagree. You're, you're wrong anyway, so there's no reason to fight. I'm just going to laugh at you if you put it in the comments. But anyways, uh, so Zorn OS's installer is fantastic as well. It's just beautiful. Zorn's beautiful. I mean... There's not much else to say. It's a really good job at Ubuntu. It needs pipe wire. It needs ARM support out there for Raspberry Pi. It needs a couple changes, I think, to the whole payment method. Again, I appreciate the fact there's a payment method, but I think it could be a little bit smoother and better. But other than that, Zorn OS kicks butt. 17 Pro, go check it out. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And guess what? It's a new year about to happen. This is my last video probably of 2023. And so now we're about to start... 2024 and 2023 it's uh it's been a year hasn't it i mean that's all i can really say about it it's been a year special 2024 is gonna rock though i've got some amazing content to bring to you we're gonna be doing some home assistant work in fact i've already got set it up it's over here it's calling my name i really want to do a video on it but i've got to get a little bit smarter on it before i do not a lot because you guys don't have high expectations for my intelligence which i appreciate uh but i gotta do a little bit more but man i've got my home like set up a home oh it's gonna be awesome i'm gonna do a video on that show you what's up what i'm doing there and of course for 2024 you know what our goal is our new year's resolution is to make sure that we all get out there and fill our brains <laughs>